Card, I think we can start. It's 5 p.m. Okay, so I think we can we can start the session. Welcome everyone uh, to the Stack Conference. It's the first session. We go online. I hope that everything will will go smooth. Uh, if you have any questions uh, during the session, please please ask them using the Q and A button at the bottom of the screen. Uh, also, you can you can raise your hand in the app, uh, and then uh, during the the question part, I'll, I'll unmute you and let you speak. Uh, but probably easier if you do it via the Q and A button at the bottom. So the, the session is about uh, TSP, uh, while the first three talks will be about approximation algorithms and the last one will be an exact algorithm. So with this, let, let's start. Uh, the talk will be about improved approximation algorithm for ATSP and the talk will be given by Vera Traub from the University of Bonn. So Vera, the floor is yours. Thank you. So welcome everyone to this talk about an improved approximation algorithm for the asymmetric traveling salesman problem. And so what I present today is some um, joint work together with Jens Fing, it's also from University of Bonn. So, so let's first start with this. What is the asymmetric traveling salesman problem? So an instance of ATSP consists of a directed graph G with vertices and edges. And then we have some non-negative costs on the edges and what we are trying to do is we want to find a tool. So we want to find a walk in G that visits every vertex at least once and then returns to its starting point. And of course we want to have this walk or this tool is to be as, this should be as, as cheap as possible. So that's the asymmetric traveling statement problem. What do we know about this problem? So there is a very classical cycle covering algorithm which gives a log two of n approximation algorithm where n is the number of vertices of the graph. This is already from the 1980s by Fisa, Galviati and Mafioli. And then there has been a line of work improving this constant factor in front of the log n. So this already shows that this line of work here that it has been quite difficult to improve over this order of log n approximation ratio. The first big breakthrough uh, then was in 2010 where I said poor and that is gave an order of log n over log log n approximation ratio for ATSP. And then there has been also a new result by Iman Nari and Overshine Garan, which gave a poorly log n upper bound on the integrality ratio of the standard LP relaxation, but it wasn't a polynomial time algorithm. So that's why it's not listed here. And then one very important result was in 2015 where Svensson gave the first constant factor approximation algorithm for, in, for a special case of ATSP, these are the so-called node-weighted instances. And then finally, two years ago at Stock, there was the big result by Svensson, Tanavsky and Weg who gave the first constant factor approximation algorithm for ATSP. They first proved an approximation ratio, which was a few thousand, then they later improved it to 506, and but that's still quite light approximation ratio. So the main result of our work now is that we could improve this 506 approximation to a 22 plus epsilon approximation. So the main theorem that we prove in our paper is that for the absolute positive epsilon, there is a polynomial time algorithm that computes for every instance of ATSP a solution of cost at most. 22 plus epsilon times the cost of an optimum LP solution. So the LP that I refer to is written below. So in this LP, we have variable where we add xe in our graph. Of course, we minimize total cost. And then as constraints, we require that the in degree of our vertex equals the out degree. And then for every subset of the vertices, so every subset u, we have the constraint requiring that the total number of that is entering or leaving you is at least two. And of course, non-negativity constraints. So our theorem, uh, so the, the optimal P value always gives a lower bound on the cost of an optimum tool. So our theorem, first of all, implies that we have a 22 plus epsilon approximation algorithm, but it also implies an upper bound of 22 
on the integrality ratio or integrality gap of this standard LP relaxation, where the previous best known upper bound was 319, which was also due to Benson, Tarnowski, and Weg. So that's our main result. To prove this result, we, on a high level, we follow the approach by Svensson, Tarnowski, and Weg. They proved the, they gave their constant factor approximation algorithm by giving a sequence of reductions. So starting from ATSP, they reduced the problem to more and more structured instances for which such that at the end they can give a constant factor approximation algorithm. And so here on the left, you see the outline of the algorithm, the sequence of reduction. And for comparison here in green, that's these are the reduction steps of our algorithm. So you see that it's kind of similar, but there are some differences. And most importantly, we are able to skip, step, to skip one of the reduction steps completely. So we don't need the step of reducing to these irreducible instances. So overall, our algorithm is somewhat similar, but in fact, it's not just, it doesn't just only achieve a much better approximation guarantee, but it's also simpler than the original algorithm. So overall, we use many concepts from the Svensson, Tarnowski and Weg algorithm, but we improve on each single step. So in the first step, we obtain some stronger properties that are mainly due for simplifying later steps. This doesn't help anything in improving. Then the most important change is in the second step, where we skip these irreducible instances and obtain a simpler reduction with a much better approximation ratio. So there, that's where we gain most of our, most in our approximation guarantee. And so that's also the focus of the longer talk if you want to watch the video of this one. And then in the, but we also improve on the third step where we give a better approximation algorithm for what is called a vertebrate pair. And there we also achieve that the approximation ratio matches the upper bound on the integrality ratio that we get, which was not the case in the algorithm by Svensson, Tarnowski, and Weg. So that's somewhat nice that we close this gap here, at least up to an epsilon. And so with this, we get the following state of the art for ATSP. So here in the table, you see the best known upper bounds. The green bounds are those ones that we improve. And so there's still some gap left between the best known upper bound on the integrality ratio of DLP relaxation now, which is 22, and the best known lower bound, which is two, and it's even two for unweighted instances of ATSP. So let me stop here, thank you. Thank you, thank you for your talk. Uh, so, so regarding the lower bounds, like if when you look at the, at the analysis, if you could go please to the previous slide, like which parts, uh, for which parts of the analysis, your analysis is known to be tight? Like, is it the problem, like if you want to improve from 22, uh, would you need to come up for sure with new ideas or is, there, or is it possible to just improve the analysis in one of the parts? So the first step of the reduction, so the reduction from ATSP to strongly laminar ATSP, that, that this step doesn't lose anything in the approximation ratio. So this is just approximation preserving. So this step in that sense is tight. And for the later parts, well, one needs to improve certainly both steps, but probably well, one probably will lose something in both steps. So if you really want to get down to two, one probably needs some, I would expect that one needs some new idea that somehow at least like maybe combines those things into a single step or does something totally different. So yeah, as long as one has many steps, one after the other, one typically loses something everywhere. So, and then like sure. things divide. Understood. So let me also read the question from by Chandra. Uh, does the paper have a simpler explanation or algorithm for the note weighted instances? Um, so it, no, well, it, the algorithm, no, that, that one is actually all very similar. So we couldn't also, we couldn't improve the upper bound on the integrality ratio for the note weighted ATSP. So that's still uh, essentially Svensson's algorithm. What we could do is also for the note weighted ATSP is Closing, close the gap between integrality ratio and approximation ratio, so the upper bound on integrality ratio. So that's why we get this 13 plus epsilon here as approximation ratio. But essentially, it's this, almost the same algorithm for the 
node weight ATSP. So this part is not simply then spent on the algorithm. Okay, there is uh, one maybe last question, but we should answer it quickly. What are the approximation factor losses in the remaining two steps? I guess is the follow-up question to the to the discussion we had a minute ago. Um, um, yes, so it, if you don't have a here. Yeah, it's a bit difficult to say because it's just not just like one single simple single factor that we lose there. So it's roughly let's say roughly something about sixteen and we for would what it would pairs, but it's actually if you yeah, the precise statement is not really just a single number. And then you get to twenty two for yeah. But we yeah, for for the strongly lamina ATSP. And the, at this step we don't lose anything. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the answers and for your talk. Uh, and now let's switch to, to Rico. So the next talk will be given by Rico Zenkusen and it will be about reducing path ESP to, to TSP. Okay, um, thanks, Marek, and uh, hi, everyone. So we'll talk about, um, this is a very quick talk about reducing path TSP to TSP. This is joint work with Vera Traub and Jens Fiegen. So let me start with the basics. So the traveling size one problem. So here we're given an undirected graph with non-negative edge length. So what's the task? The task is to find a multi-subgraph of minimum total length such that, let me just give an example, such that all the vertices have even degree and the graph is connected. So for path TSP, the question is essentially identical with the only difference that if two designated vertices S and T are stored in an endpoint that need to have odd degree. So those are precisely the properties you need to be able to, in TSP, store the vertex, traverse all the edges precisely once and return to where you store it. And for path TSP, you do the same, but storing it as and ending at T. So there's an important special case that has been studied quite extensively, which is the graph version of those problems. So the graph version means that all the edge lengths are equal to one. Often people also talk about the so-called graph metric in this case. So there's no way I could uh, give justice to everything that was done. All the prior um, work on this topic, so I just tried to summarize things in terms of, of this graphic. So we're interested in approximation algorithms. So you see here approximation factors have been achieved over time. In red and orange, you see results for path TSP. So red is for the general path TSP and orange for its graph version. And in dark green and light green, you see the approximation results that have been achieved for TSP and its graph version. So of course, graph TSP, uh, sorry, path TSP is a, is a more general problem than TSP because you can choose start and end point to be different uh, from each other. That's why also the approximation factors, they, they lagged behind the ones for TSP. So the red and orange line are above the dark green and, and light green line. So only recently we have now matching results for TSP and path TSP with factors of 1.5. But for example, for the graph version of those problems, there's still a huge gap. Uh, this, this is this gap here. So we're for a path TSP, we have an approximation factor now of slightly below 1.5, and for TSP, it's 1.4 actual. Uh, but I think in general, the, the question that we were interested in here is, to what extent is path TSP really harder to approximate than TSP, or is it just that we lack the, the right techniques? And we give an answer to this question in our paper by showing that actually it is not harder to approximate in the following sense. So whenever you have an alpha approximation for TSP, then you can transform it into an alpha plus epsilon approximation for path TSP for an arbitrarily small constant there epsilon. So this is a black box reduction. So without any, we don't need any assumptions on this alpha approximation for TSP. And it's quite robust with respect to, um, uh, to how it works. So in particular, it also applies to the graph version of those problems. So one immediate implication is the gap I mentioned right beforehand. So this gap here uh, now vanishes. So, uh, so we get now a 1.4 plus epsilon approximation for the graph version of, of path TSP. Uh, however, I think what's much more important is that from now on, this discrepancy between TSP and path TSP in terms of approximation, factor, uh, approximation factors uh, will, um, uh, will not happen anymore in the future. So whenever you find a TSP and an approximation algorithm for TSP, it will carry over immediately to path TSP. So if I around two minutes to give you a glimpse of the, of, this, um, uh, of the reduction that leads to that result. So let me start with the first, um, with the first uh, uh, somewhat technical observation, that, but then we have to generalize that quite significantly to make our reduction work. But let's look at a path TSP problem. 
So it turns out you're always in one of two cases. Either you have, you're in a case where S and T, so start and end point, are very close to each other, in which case it's almost like a TSP problem. So what you actually can do is just solve TSP on the same instance and then add a path from S to T and you will have a very good path TSP solution. Whenever that's not the case, so when you're in so my case two here, then uh, we can show you can find a chain of, uh, of cuts. So uh, I think this would be this chain over here of cuts such that, um, so let's look at an optimal solution. Assume that I, I, we see an optimal solution in this diagram to the left. Then I would like to guess in each one of those cuts, whenever a cut has only almost constantly many opt edges, I would like to guess those edges uh, in, uh, that, that opt uses. And we will do this with a dynamic program. So this dynamic program would, would guess here the blue edges. Let's say the constant is five in this example. And this will break the problem into smaller subproblems. So in particular, so one of those subproblems would be this subproblem here. Let's see, yeah, this one here. So one key issue is that those subproblems are not path TSP problems anymore. They're much more complicated problems because they have to connect the different uh, I mean, bl blue endpoints in certain ways inside. And we define a new problem class for that that we call phi TSP. So people have used similar, have used similar dynamic programming ideas in, in, uh, in related contexts, but there they just guess the single edge typically. And by guessing a single edge, then the problems in between remain path TSP problems, and this uh, makes things much simpler. So maybe the, so the last thing I want to say about the technical aspect is, so maybe the key technical contribution is we show that this idea of these two cases that we have beforehand for path TSP, this extends also to phi TSP. So it means that we can actually, at so the beginning, we guess solutions in this chain of cuts. We break the problem into phi TSP problems. Now each one of those is either close to a TSP problem, so be the green ones in my graphic, or they are not. And if they are not, we can find a family of cuts. This time it's a, it's a laminar family. I drew a quick picture here on the right-hand side for that. We can again guess edges and keep recursive. And so the last trick is that one issue is the more you recurse, the more complicated those five TSP problems get. But we show that every, every time you recurse, you get a constant fraction of opt, and therefore I interaction mean, in terms of, of length. And therefore, after constant recursion depth, we, will actually, um, uh, we can actually terminate that procedure. So that's all I wanted to say. And here's just, again, the main theorem that we, we have shown. So I'm happy to, to take now any, any possible questions. Thank you, Rico. So I guess your paper provides more answers than questions. So let's see whether we have any. I like the fact that you closed the gap. Uh, let's see whether there are any questions from the audience. So I, I see two questions. I can I can maybe start. So Anupam asks, does this say anything about relating to integrality, to integrality gaps? So actually the answer is, uh, uh, is no in this case. So because this dynamic program is um, is really not LP related uh, and therefore there's no direct, uh, actually not even any consequence I could say right away in terms of integrality gaps. And uh, Chandra asks essentially the same, the same question it seems. So that I think that, that should answer both questions, yeah. Okay, thank you. In the meantime, I checked whether anyone raised their hand, but there are no hand raises. So let's wait one more minute. So there is um, uh, one more question. Are any separations known between TSP and path TSP in general? Um, so in terms of, of um, approximation algorithms, the, uh, as, as far as I know, the answer is no. And as our results strongly suggest that probably um, this is not unlikely that there is no separation. Of course, there's still this one, this is small epsilon that, is, that we, we don't close, but um, uh, uh, but it would be maybe somewhat surprising if there were separation in that sense. Mm -hmm. And there is a question from Anupam whether we clap. So maybe I will can't clap. answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me finish here. Uh, thank you, Rico. And in the meantime, we'll switch to Nathan and I will clap. Thank you.
we have Nathan. Yeah. Yes, so the next one, talk stack will be given by Nathan Klein. It will be about improve approximation for, again, TSP, but now in the half integral case. Okay, so this is, yeah, joint work with Anna Carlin and Shaino Vescaran. We're all from UW, University of Washington. Um, okay, so in this problem, which Rico also just introduced, um, we're given a list of cities and a metric giving their pairwise symmetric distances. And we want to find the minimum cost tour uh, that visits every city at least once. Our goal here is to approximate TSP. So currently the best known approximation algorithm has a ratio of three halves. And it's from Christophe in 1976. Uh, and since then, there's been a lot of exciting work on approximating metric TSP and related problems. Um, however, since this three halves approximation, there's been no improvement in the general case. So a major open question remains, can we beat this three halves? One of the key tools in approximating TSP has been this uh, linear programming relaxation. So here, every edge E gets a variable XE, every vertex gets fractional degree two, and every cut gets fraction at least two. So we obtain essentially a fractional Hamiltonian cycle. Given this LP, we can define our special case of interest called half integral. And it simply means that when you solve this LP relaxation, every edge is zero, one half, or one. So this graph on the right is half integral. And this sounds maybe a bit artificial, um, which is maybe true, but there are some good reasons for studying this case. So first, the best known integrality gap example is actually half integral. And second, Schallekamp, Williamson, and Van Zolen conjecture that half integral instances attain this integrality gap. Um, and finally, it's sort of a, a good uh, testing ground to uh, sharpen our methods. It offers a pretty simple structure, but uh, until now has resisted, resisted attempts to improve upon three halves. So as our main result, we show a 1.49993 approximation for half integral TSP. And so this demonstrates that if the conjecture I mentioned is true, uh, the integrality gap of the subtor polytope is really bounded away from three halves. So in our work, we study an algorithm which is based on a, a work by my co-author Cheyenne, as well as Siberian Singh. So first we solve the LP, then we choose a spanning tree from the maximum entropy distribution which respects the marginals of the LP solution, excluding one kind of root edge. Um, and then we add the minimum cost matching on the odd vertices of the tree to obtain a tour. So here the green and the red edges together make an Eulerian tour. You might notice this is very similar to Christofide's exception the choice of the tree. And in our analysis, we show that the cost of the matching is less than half the cost of the LP in expectation. Uh, and so this together with the fact that the tree is sampled from the LP gives it better than uh, three halves approximation and also bounds the integrality ratio. So our, our analysis of the cost of the matching uses three main tools. So here's an example half integral graph where every edge here has x e equals one half. So it's four regular. Analyzing the cost of the matching is closely related to the parity and the structure of the minimum cuts in the support graph. So here are the, the cuts containing exactly four edges. And we use the so-called cactus representation of minimum cuts to kind of narrow our focus to a laminar hierarchy of minimum cuts. Our second tool is called independence. We exploit this cactus structure uh, in the algorithm to ensure independence inside each level of the hierarchy. So here, different colors represent actually independently sampled trees in the algorithm. And as I mentioned, our trees, uh, tree is sampled from the maximum entropy distribution, which has been used in the past for TSP. Uh, and our final tool is the properties of this distribution. Uh, so the resulting distribution is so-called strongly rally because it's uh, generating polynomial is real stable. Um, strongly rally distributions have lots of uh, useful and let's say magical uh, qualities. So we combine these tools to bound the expected cost of the matching uh, using an inductive argument over the hierarchy of minimum cuts that I showed you. And this gives our result. 
Uh, so next steps, the first obvious question is whether there's a reduction to the half integral case, whether this conjecture is true, uh, or whether there's an improved analysis here. I think there should be. Um, we also ask whether we can extend this analysis to the, half, uh, to the general case, and we're optimistic about this. Um, however, we ask whether there are totally new approaches to analyzing this algorithm. Uh, max entropy trees offer quite a lot of structure and independence, so there's a lot of room to, to play. So that's it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan. So what is known on the lower bounds in terms of the half integral case? Um, the integrality gap is four thirds. I, I think uh, in terms of hardness results, I only know this 123 over 122. I don't know anything in particular about half no, integral. No, I'm talking about the integrality gap. So it's four over three. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, the four thirds is the conjectured sort of right answer here, but. Okay. Uh, there's a question. How do you solve half integral LP in poly time? So we actually, um, maybe I'm not sure if this is the correct interpretation of the question, but we just sort of assume that we're given a, an LP solution that's half integral and, and from there we, we do our analysis. So, you know, you, you may solve the LP and, and not get a half integral solution. Um, not sure if that was exactly the question. But. This is how I understood it as well. And there's a question from Chandra about the lower bond, but I think we've already discussed this. So let's wait a minute whether there are any new questions popping up. Yeah, I guess I, I could say something more about the lower bound on the algorithm. I think the um, there's sort of a conjecture this algorithm may also get four thirds. Um, and I think we may, it may be that the, the actual worst example comparing to opt is something like five fourths um, that we know about. But. And there is one more question from Jens. Uh, do you get a better approximation guarantee for half integral instances of graph DSP? Um, that's a good question. We actually didn't look into that. I expect that the analysis would be quite a bit easier and you would get a lower number if you tried. Yeah. Um, but would you expect it to be close to 1.5 1, 1. as well? Or do you think that it would be possible to somehow substantially deviate from yeah, the 1.5? I wonder. Probably, yeah, I don't know. Maybe 1.49 <laughs> you could get. Um, <laughs> maybe not so many nines. But, um, Okay, I think those are all the questions. So thank you, Nathan. I'll clap for you. Okay, thanks. Uh, and now we may switch to the last talk of the session. Uh, we will not talk about approximation algorithms, but uh, exact algorithms, and the talk will be given by Jesper Nederle. All right, um, I guess I can start already. Um, yeah, so my talk is about uh, bivitite DSP. So in, uh, in my version of the Fleming salesman problem, we are given n vertices in between each pair of uh, vertices with different distance, which for me is an integer between one and capital W for infinity. And uh, the question is to find uh, the shortest round clip that visits all the vertices exactly once. So here's an example, and here's the shortest tour. Um, and indeed, we look at the exact setting here, so um, since uh, 62, it's known that the problem can be solved in time roughly two to the power n with a simple dynamic programming algorithm. Um, and in 2010, there was a very nice breakthrough by Jurgens. And he showed the problem can be solved in 1.67 to the power n times capital W for instances that are symmetric. So again, this means that uh, the distance from i to j equals the distance from j to i. But this uh, capital W can very well be exponential in the input size. So it's, these two ring times are not really comparable. And uh, it's an older question still whether this algorithm from uh, 62 can be improved significantly. So can we get some two minus epsilon to the power n ring time here? And in this work, uh, 
yeah, we try to make some progress uh, and in some sense we do, but there are some caveats. So we do answer this question, but um, we assume again that the instance is symmetric. Um, and in some sense, this is a bit of a necessary uh, uh, assumption because even in the unweighted asymmetric TSP case, we do not know yet how to get a faster algorithm. So that's just uh, detecting, that's a more general case in detecting Hamiltonian cycles in directed graph. And even that, as far as I know, uh, there's no algorithm known that does it faster than the healthy car. Another caveat is that we look at bite uh, graphs here. Yeah, this doesn't really come in naturally maybe, um, but still it's a very interesting special case because also in the breakthrough by Björklund, um, this was a very important stepping stone to get a faster algorithm uh, for um, symmetric instances uh, that are bipartite. And then the last caveat is that we need to assume that omega is two. So um, yeah, this basically means that we assume that one can multiply S times S matrices in S to the power two time. That's a highly non-trivial assumption, not clear at all whether it's true. Um, but it's, uh, as far as I know, it was not really used before to uh, overcome some kind of a boundary. Like here we try to improve over this two to the n algorithm condition on this statement. And I, yeah, I was not aware of uh, similar such uh, conditional uh, um, breakthroughs for, for some uh, boundary running time, some frontier running time. Okay, so uh, my second slide is about the approach. Um, so let me just tell you a bit how it goes. Um, so first, uh, we assume that the number of integers is even. Uh, so in this example, we already, already had an even number of, uh, of vertices. And then you can see that the tour, it, you can see it as that it um, alternates between using two perfect matchings. So actually, now we can just think of the problem as trying to find a pair of perfect matchings that form a Hamiltonian cycle, form a single cycle, and that, min um, that pair should minimize the sum of the total distance. So this D of a matching is just the sum of the distance of all the edges in it. So what we could do is just list all the perfect matchings that we see in the graph and then go, go over all pairs and see which uh, among the ones that form a Hamiltonian cycle, which has total minimum distance. That's one candidate algorithm. But of course, it's very slow because there is a huge amount of perfect matchings. And because of this, we have a first step. And the first step uh, finds a, a set calligraphic A of only 2 to the n over 2 perfect matchings. And that family is representative in some sense. And we do this uh, fast enough. And what this representative uh, means, I'm not going to define it proper, properly here. Um, it means that we can safely restrict uh, our attention to looking for perfect pairs of perfect matchings that form Hamiltonian cycle uh, from this, uh, this small family of perfect matchings. And we will still uh, get the optimal uh, TSP tool. So in this example, it turns out that we can safely disregard this, uh, this first perfect matching and uh, just ignore it. And it turns out we can still guarantee there will be a uh, uh, Hamiltonian cycle. Um, and yeah, this is actually something uh, that was also done uh, before in previous work. And it turns out that you can find such a small family of representative uh, matchings uh, as a row basis of a certain matrix. This is the matchings connectivity matrix, very important matrix in this work. So here's an example. It's indexed by all perfect matchings, and you put a one if a two perfect matchings form a single cycle. Um, and in this first step, I also use uh, these two caveats, uh, bike tightness and uh, fast matrix multiplication. And then step two is the part where the most uh, new stuff is happening in this paper. Um, so now we've, we solve this uh, problem that naturally uh, still is uh, remaining to do. So we find two such perfect matchings of minimum distance uh, fast enough. So if you plug in this upper bound on calligraphic A here, you get the fast enough ring time. And we do this by combining a uh, five volts uh, matrix product verification test with a new factorization of this um, matching's connectivity matrix. Uh, that's all I had. Thank you, Jesper. Well, now it's time for, for questions. Let me remind you that you can either ask questions by raising your hand in the app or by typing your question in the Q&A using the button down below.
So in the meantime, I have a question for you, Jesper. So what do you think is the next natural step in the quest for getting the better than to do and algorithm for the TSP? Uh, yeah, one which, can go. Which constraint? I which constraint do you set us to, to relax now? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I, I think they are all, so we, had, we have these three parts and I think they're all very interesting. Um, getting to this uh, Hamiltonian cycle in direct across, uh, I think we are very close to that. There was some very nice uh, work that won the best uh, ICOL paper, I think, two years ago. That in, except in some pathological uh, circumstances, we can always solve this fast. So I think uh, we are close uh, to that one. Um, yeah, the other cases, uh, I have some ideas, but I, I do not dare to say how close we are to actually resolving these, uh, uh, these assumptions yet, or to relaxing them. And there is one more question. Does the runtime degrade nicely if we weaken slightly the assumption of on omega? Like if, if omega is not two, but it's slightly higher, then uh, yeah, what happens? Uh, yeah, the, ans the answer is yes. So uh, I think we only need omega to be uh, something like uh, at most two to the power point zero zero one, something like that. Um, okay. But yeah, I, I think if it's already 2.05 uh, or so, the current approach does not, uh, does not work. And there is also a technical question uh, whether the recordings will be available later. And to be honest, this I don't know. Okay, let's wait uh, one more minute to see whether there, there are any more questions. Yuri wrote that the recordings should be available later, so that's good. Okay, since there are no more questions, so I'd like to thank Jesper and all the speakers of the all the speakers of the session. So I'll clap for all of you. Uh, thank you, and I think everyone everything went smoothly. So let's see each other on the for the sessions. Thank you. <laughs>